Well, I feel like I'm like every other coach in the country at this time of year. You're cautiously optimistic uh, about the season because you're zero and zero going into the year. But we have a good mixture of returners and a good mixture of young kids that make up this roster this year. So um, we. It, it should be, it's a good mix right now. Uh, we're at a smaller roster than we typically have been with 12. So injuries are on the mind uh, of every coach across the country, but even when you have a smaller roster. So uh, we're cautiously optimistic, need to stay healthy, but uh, we're, we're looking forward to the season with great anticipation. When you look at our unit from last year, I think Alexis Rogers, her name stands out first and foremost with, with her presence and with her age, being a fifth year redshirt senior uh, and also earning an honorable mention all-American accolade when she was younger. She will uh, stand out to, to everyone out there. She received several double teams last year, but uh, she has come back in fantastic shape um, and has been uh, a good leader for us on the floor. Uh, you look at some other positions on our team, our point guard Jillian Halfhill, who the ball will be in her hands the majority of the times um, since she, due to her position, but uh, she played over 30 minutes la last year and she's also gonna see sig that uh, similar significant playing time a as a senior as well. But yeah, th those two stand out for me first and foremost because those two are the two oldest on the team a a as well. Well, we have four freshmen uh, that will see playing time uh, and significant playing time to say the least, but also one of our transfers, Erica Donovan, uh, will be in the mix immediately. She had to redshirt last year uh, due to NCAA rules with her transfer from NC State, but she's made a tremendous impact on us already during the summer and preseason and currently in practice, and we're going to ask her to play a, a multiple uh, positions inside and outside, but she's got the ability to score uh, in and outside and she will make an immediate impact like, like I said and has gelled really well with our kids, especially after having that year off. Well, it's extremely difficult. I, I've told many people this, but I feel like an honorary Big Ten member. Uh, we play Purdue, Ohio State, Michigan. Uh, it's just kind of a schedule in the non-conference, the, the who's who of women's basketball, especially in this region. And, and those are a few BCS schools. I mean, you also include in Arizona, but then you start talking about mid-major powers uh, over the last few years that have made their, their name. I mean, you have uh, Marist, you have an Old Dominion, you have uh, Butler, you have a Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and Iona. Uh, several schools that felt like they were on the bubble to receive an NCAA bid from last year, yet went to the NIT. So we have multiple teams that not only won 20 games in the non-conference schedule for on our non-conference schedule slate, but also that went to postseason play that had that experience and that also returned veterans. So it's a it's a difficult scheduling is a difficult process. And uh, I had my hand in it a lot last year, and I feel like I almost made the schedule too tough for us in the non-conference. Non uh, so I, I handed that duty off to another assistant coach this year. But uh, it, it's, we created on purpose a schedule in the non-conference to challenge us because our conference uh, is unbelievably difficult from top to bottom. We, it's loaded with fantastic coaches, premier players. Uh, so we'll, hopefully that non-conference schedule will prepare us for January.